Dinosaurs in Ice? When we think about a time when dinosaurs ran the world, we often picture hot, humid places in a world that is vastly different from our own. But Prehistoric Planet, narrated by Sir David Attenborough, shows that dinosaurs lived and did well in many different kinds of places, including colder areas where snowstorms, freezing fog, and sea ice were typical. When the show's makers first asked Professor Bob Spicer and Alex Farnsworth, both meteorologists and paleoclimatologists, to help them figure out what the weather and environment were like for dinosaurs before they died out, about 66 million years ago, they had to solve a problem that has been around for decades in paleoclimate modeling. That is, when scientists use computers to simulate or model the temperature of prehistoric Earth, the models tended to make the poles much colder than the fossils and rocks showed they had been. Not only have the researchers made their models better for prehistoric planet, but they have also run the computer programs longer than anyone else has ever done to get the models as close as possible to ancient reality. The BBC's Natural History Unit, which was in charge of making the show, needed to know about the weather so that they could film in real-world places that looked like places where dinosaurs lived in the past. But most of what is known about the climate that long ago comes from indirect proxy evidence, like fossilized leaves and traces of certain chemicals and rocks, which can only be used to figure out the average climate over decades or centuries. This is where the assumption that the Cretaceous world was much hotter and had more water in it comes from. This inference isn't exactly wrong, but it doesn't tell the whole story, because weather, temperature, and climate behave differently. For example, even though the world is getting warmer, Texas, which is usually hot and muggy, can get a lot of snow. Geologists will notice the quick warming of the planet a million years from now, but not the freak snowstorms. Still, it's important to model what these snowstorms were like in the past because we know that warmer worlds will have more extreme weather, and these extremes will have been a big part of why some places were totally unlivable for dinosaurs. Even though fossils can tell us a lot about how the weather was in the past, most of them can't tell us what the weather was like day to day. So, how do we know what the weather was like on May 27th, 66 million years ago, in a certain place on Earth? To do this, the researchers needed to use a computer modeling of the climate, like the ones used now to predict how the climate will change in the future. These models are based on basic biological and physical processes that don't change over time, so the researchers can change them to fit past worlds, even if they don't know exact details like where the mountains were or how high they were, or how much carbon dioxide was in the air. Then, they can use fossilized leaves, coral, or rocks, which have signs of what the climate was like at the time, to check how accurate these models are. If their model fits the proxies, which it did, they could be sure that it is simulating the weather as it would have been at the time. So, what did they learn from trying to figure out the weather 66 million years ago? Their model showed that there would have been strong blizzards in Antarctica, category 6 hurricanes in the mid and low latitudes, which we are likely to see in our lifetimes, and large always present fog banks that made winters cloudy under polar cloud caps. This doesn't sound like a place where dinosaurs would be happy, but the old idea that dinosaurs were cold-blooded and needed warm weather to live has, for the most part, already been proven wrong. The new idea is that dinosaurs were warm-blooded and could control their body temperature in some ways, like mammals can today. This would be necessary to survive big changes in temperature caused by different weather trends, especially in the Arctic and Antarctic. So, the modeling backs up recent fossil finds that show that some dinosaur species were used to living in cold environments, could see in low light, which would have been helpful in those big fog banks, and thrived all year near the poles. The scenes of prehistoric planet with the cold pachyrhinosaurs were filmed in Alaska. This shows why the series wanted to use climate models to check how accurate it was. We know what it was like there 66 million years ago because of the fossils of plants, dinosaurs, and other animals. However, the old models said it would have been an extremely cold and lifeless tundra. 
Instead, the model agrees with the fossil evidence and projects forests all the way to the edge of the Arctic Ocean at 82 degrees north, which is much farther north than any trees are today. Dinosaur food would have been easy to find in the summer, but it would have been harder to find in the long, dark winters because fossils and computer models show that it was very foggy. Dinosaurs survived for 165 million years, which is a long time. Tyrannosaurus rex, for example, lived much closer to people than it did to Stegosaurus. They were able to survive for so long because they were strong and could change with the surroundings, just like mammals do today. The research for a prehistoric planet shows that they were able to live through bigger temperature swings, stormier weather, and worse droughts than humans have ever seen, at least so far. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.